untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-red giant tribal deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring Agar the Freezing Flame as our commander, a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three legendary giant wizard, saying whenever a creature or planeswalker an opponent controls is dealt excess damage, if a giant, wizard or spell we control to deal damage to it, we get to draw a card. So plays very well with large burn spells and other giant creatures. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck, split up into a few different categories, starting with the giant payoff cards, where we have a glimpse of the cosmos, a 2-mana sorcery, lets us look at the top 3 cards to put one into our hand, and if we control a giant, we can flash it back out of the graveyard for a single blue mana, essentially. Then there's Fire Giant's Fury, giving one of our giants plus 2 plus 2 and trample at sorcery speed, and when that creature deals combat damage to a player this turn, we get to exile that many cards from the top of our library, and until the end of our next turn we may play those cards, so it can provide a lot of card advantage. Then we have a couple sagas, with Invasion of the Giants one of them. On chapter 1 we get to scry 2, then on chapter 2 we get to draw a card and reveal a giant card from our hand to potentially deal 2 damage to target opponent or planeswalker. And finally, the next giant spell we cast this turn gets a 2 mana discount. Then we also have a Battle of Frost and Fire as another saga, which deals 4 damage to each non-giant creature and each planeswalker. Then we get to Scry 3, and finally, whenever we cast a spell with mana value 5 or greater this turn, we get to draw 2 cards and then discard. There is also Giant's Grasp, originally from the Theme Boosters, a 4 mana enchantment aura enchanting one of our giants, and when it enters we get to gain control of targets non-land permanent for as long as Giant's Grasp remains on the battlefield. So it can be a little bit risky if the opponent can remove the creature we're enchanting, but generally want to run it out when the opponent is close to empty-handed, and then can be a nice mind control effect for any permanent. We've got Reflections of Lejara, a 5-man enchantment, essentially doubling any giant we cast in the form of a creature token. And then there's Squash, one of our many burn spells, but this one gets a 3-mana discount as long as we control a giant, so then it's just 2-mana at instant speed to deal 6 damage to a creature or planeswalker, so guaranteed to deal some excess damage with Agar. Then the next category are the giant creatures, starting out with a giant's amulet, which when it enters we can pay 4 mana to make a 4-4 blue giant wizard creature token and attach the amulet to it, giving it 1 additional toughness and hexproof as long as it's untapped, and then equips for 2 mana afterwards. With good glass pool mimic, can enter as a copy of one of our creatures, otherwise can also be a tapped land. The Protector, a new alchemy card, a 3-4 giant wizard with ward 1, and when it enters a battlefield, each other giant or wizard creature we control, and each giant or wizard card in our hand perpetually gains ward 1. We've got Bonecrusher Giant, doesn't need an introduction, a powerful adventure stapled onto an efficient creature. We've got Shadow Skull Charger, which we can play for 3 mana, and then we have to pick it back up end of turn, or we can kick it to keep it in play with extra counters. Crystalline Giant slowly picks up extra ability counters. We've got Faceless Agent, letting us seek another giant when it enters the battlefield. Basalt Ravager can potentially take out an opposing creature dealing X damage, where X is the greatest number of creatures we control that have a creature type in common, which is going to be giants in our deck. Calamity Bearer will double the damage outputted by our giants, including itself, so it deals 6 damage when it attacks. We've got Tectonic Giant, a 3-4 that when it attacks or becomes a target of a spell an opponent controls, either deals 3 damage to each opponent, or we get to exile the top 2 cards of our library, choose one of them, and until the end of our next turn we may play that card. There's Two-Headed Giant, not an actual format, just a 4-4 creature that when it attacks lets us flip 2 coins. If both come up heads, the giant gains double strike until end of turn. If both are tails, it gets menace until end of turn, and hopefully we don't flip one of each. Then there's Thrix, the Sudden Storm, a 4-5 with Flash and Flying, saying spells we cast with mana value 5 or greater cost 1 generic mana less to cast and cannot be countered. There's Quakebringer, a 5-4, saying the opponents cannot gain life, and at the beginning of our upkeep, Quakebringer deals 2 damage to each opponent, and this ability only triggers if Quakebringer is on the battlefield, or if Quakebringer is in our graveyard and we control a giant, so it can still do some work out of the graveyard, can also be foretold. 
Then there's Prophetic Titan, a 6 mana 4 4 that when it enters the battlefield lets us choose one mode between dealing 4 damage to any target or looking at the top 4 cards of our library, putting one of them into our hand. Now, if we also have Delirium enabled, meaning 4 or more card types among cards in our graveyard, we get to choose both modes instead. We're not a dedicated Delirium deck, but it's still quite achievable to get Delirium by turn 6 between instants, sorceries, creatures, artifacts, and even some of our fetch lands ending up in our graveyard. Then there's Cyclone Summoner at 7 mana, a 7-7 seven, seven, that when it enters the battlefield, if we cast it from our hand, gets to return all permanents to their owner's hands, except for giants, wizards and lands, so it can be a nice one-sided bounce effect. And finally, Sirtland Elementalist, a 7 mana 8-8, eight, eight, as an additional cost to cast it, we have to reveal a giant card from our hand or pay 2 generic mana, and when the Elementalist attacks, we can cast an instant or sorcery spell from our hand without paying its mana cost, which can also be very powerful. Then the next category of cards are burn spells, usually burn spells that can deal 3 or 4 damage at the very least, starting out with frostbite, which can deal 3 damage if we control 3 or more snow permanents, which works with our snow lands of course. Then lightning axe deals 5 damage to a creature for just 1 mana, but as an additional cost we have to discard a card or pay 5, but if we have agar in play we can quickly make up for that card disadvantage to get an efficient burn spell. There's Lightning Bolt dealing 3 to any target, a Braid can deal 3 to a creature or destroy an artifact, Molten Impact a new alchemy card dealing 4 damage to a creature or planeswalker at sorcery speed, and excess damage is saved to be stapled onto our next instant or sorcery. We've got Thundering Rebuke which is very similar, Brittle Blast can deal 5 to a creature or planeswalker at instant speed, potentially exiling anything as well. We've got Crush the Weak dealing 2 damage to each creature, exiling those creatures in the process can also be foretold. Demon Bolt can also be foretold, dealing 4 damage to a creature or planeswalker. Fight with Fire deals 5 to a creature, can also be kicked, and then we can deal 10 damage divided as we choose among any number of targets, so then it can also go upstairs. And then we've got both a Rending Flame and Soul Seer, dealing 5 to a creature or planeswalker at instant speed. Soul Seer also removes Indestructible, which can come in handy. Wizard's Lightning is essentially a Lightning Bolt as long as we control a wizard, and Agar is luckily a wizard as well. We've got Tundra Fumarol, dealing 4 to a creature or planeswalker, and gives us our mana back in the form of colorless mana if we spent snow mana to cast it. Then there's Expansion Explosion, both halves are useful. Expansion to potentially copy a cheaper spell, Explosion as a nice finisher, drawing a few cards as well. And then a Meteor Swarm can also deal a lot of damage, so easy to deal excess damage with it. Then the next category are Ramp Artifacts, where we have Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol and Mind Stone at 2 mana, Celestus at 3, potentially letting us loot away some cards, gaining a life in the process if it switches between day and night, and then Firemind Vessel, Hedron Archive and Key to the Archive Ramp for 2, and Key to the Archive also lets us draft a card from the 15 card spellbook. And then the next category are additional cards that are kind of difficult to classify otherwise. Harmonic Prodigy, a 1-3 human wizard with prowess, saying if an ability of a shaman or another wizard we control triggers, that ability triggers an additional time. So it can also potentially double the triggers from Agar, and there's a few other giant wizards in the deck. Thinking of Basalt Ravager, for instance, can be quite nice with Harmonic Prodigy out. We've got Expressive Iteration as just a nice card draw effect. Same with Behold the Multiverse, which we can also foretell early. And that is also a nice combo with some of our ramp artifacts like Hedron Archive, making double colorless. We can still potentially foretell a card the turn we play it. And then there's Leer, which lets us replay cards out of our graveyard. Does mean that our counter spells are nerfed while Leer is out, but great combo with all our burn spells. And then a Time Warp to take an extra turn, always powerful. And then the final category are counter spells, as well as a dive down to potentially protect our commander. We've got wash away great at countering opposing commanders, disdainful stroke for expensive spells, negate for non-creature spells, counter spell, and finally wizard's lightning, which is basically a counter spell as long as we control a wizard. And then our mana base is pretty straightforward. A few cards I want to highlight include Hall of the Storm Giants, which turns into a 7-7 a giant creature with Ward 3 if we activate it. And then we've got the Riptide Laboratory, can pay 2 mana and tap it to return target wizard we control to its owner's hand, so that can potentially save our commander from removal. Also great combo with creatures like Basalt Ravager that have a nice enter the battlefield ability. And then a whole bunch of dual lands as well as some fetch lands, which are also good at enabling our Delirium for Prophetic Titan. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing Talrand's Sky Summoner. So can expect a lot of counter spells and other instants and sorceries. 
and uh, our hand has a bit of a, a lack of burn spells but we can expect to draw them. We've got a temple to scry. A lot of tap lands, I guess, is the drawback. But a counter spell could counter tall rains. So I'll give it a shot. Maybe wait on temple, see if we draw more untapped lands before potentially bottoming additional lands. Also need to get my double blue sorted for counter spell. It is tempting to get the Prodigy out before they can counter it. I think I still wait and get my double blue sorted. And then now we'll scry. Wizard's Lightning is fine. A one mana burn spell with either Prodigy or Agar in play. Now, don't expect Agar to necessarily resolve. So we could go for Prodigy. And then play a tap land as well. Alright. No response, so Agar could have potentially resolved. And then dive down doesn't seem necessary against a mono blue deck. It's gonna be a search for Ascanta. So. Yeah, we'll go for Agar now that our opponent's mostly tapped out. Hope there's no wash away. Oh, a Mystical Dispute. Not the card I was expecting. That works. So I guess they might have been able to counter Agar with a Mystical Dispute on turn 3. Okay, probably fine to play the Protector here. Invasion of the Giants would have been the other consideration. Would have kept up Counterspell. But it seems early enough that you don't need access to Counterspell when we have a Wizard's Lightning instead. Opponent commits Prodigy, that works. Still have a one mana lightning available. Search for Ascanta is eventually going to be a problem. Gadwick for one. We could try and kill in response. Opponent's got to spell pierce. So all the cheap counter spells here. No lands means probably just go for invasion. And then bottom bottom. Although Giant's Grasp is a way to potentially steal Ascanta before it transforms. It's unlikely to resolve and they're also likely to be able to bounce my Giant. So it seems like a risky plan. And then we'll hit for three. And have counter spell available. And Gadwick attacks. And then reveal charger. Okay, get in for three. Can counter something like a Torrential Gear Hulk. Big Shark Typhoon could be annoying. And then tapping out for Reflection is incredibly risky here. But it's maybe still the play. Because now if our Giants get countered, we still get a copy at least. Opponent's just gonna scry with Castle. We've got an answer to Talrand in the form of Molten Impact.
opponent happy with both cards. And then next turn we also get the discount from Invasion. Time Warp is what I was afraid of, opponent takes an extra turn. So they'll be able to transform a Skanta pretty easily. At least they only had Gadwick in play and not a whole bunch of Drake tokens from Talrand. They could also cast Memory to refresh both hands. But we do have a Reflection in play, so if we can pick up a few Giants, that would still be good for us. But now a Skanta transformed, so can't really afford to play a slow game, because Ascanta will eventually take over. Alright, so our Giants get a discount. And then... I think we go for Charger. Play Charger with Kicker, and then still have Counterspell or Molten Impact. Might want to Molten Impact Tolerant first, actually, and back it up with Counterspell before they make a bunch of tokens. Uh, they've got an Intervention, makes a Drake, but they won't be able to tap anything down, at least. Okay, and then... Could also go for Expansion to um, copy the Molten Impact to keep Counterspell. Don't hate that idea either. And then we've got two excess damage stored up. And then we'll play Charger. So get a nice attack in. Bones at five. But now Gandwick does line up quite well against Charger, being able to tap it down if they can play an instance. But they are down to one card in hand. So, we'll see. Terramander. And then it can either replay Talrands, cast Memory, or activate Ascanta. Right now, Shadow Skull Charger with Reflections is quite threatening. So they're gonna try and find an answer. But we have a Counterspell backup. Opponent finds Shark Typhoon, card we mentioned earlier. Can be cycled to make a 2-2 Shark, but won't be able to trigger Gadwick. So, yeah, we might be able to close out the game here. So play Charger with Kicker, and then still have Counterspell, but not that we really need it here. Attack with the team. I guess her opponent can still adapt Terramander potentially, since that happens at instant speed. So Gadwick down, Terramander adapts. And that's a trade. So her opponent falls to two. So. They manage to survive, and then hopefully Counterspell is good enough to preserve our advantage. Hard cast Shark Typhoon, we definitely want to counter. And now a Chemist's Insight would have made a 4-4 Shark, but now they're tapped out and they should be dead on the way back. Alright, sweet, so yeah, very close game against Mono Blue Talrand. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand is 
maybe lacking a land or two, but I think we can still try it out. Plenty of removal to take care of Tamiyo. And then hopefully we'll have an Agar in play to draw an extra card with. Alright, we can stomp with Bone Crusher. Opponent with an early opt. So we're facing Collector of Tales, Mindstone a little bit late, but I'll still go for it. Compulsive Research to draw. Fair enough. Opponent discards a land and has to discard another land to hand size, so they're not having the same issues. Well, I guess we can run out Agar and then if they play Tamyo, can maybe squash to deal with her. Right, opponent's just gonna pass with a bunch of mana available. We hit our land drop, that's good. So I'll start by attacking and then could just go for a Fire Mind Vessel, could cast Behold the Multiverse. Both are reasonable. I think I prefer Beholds, especially in case our opponent's holding a counter spell. So we'll foretell, pass, and then we can still either play a burn spell or cast or card draw. Opponent's got a Deluge to draw as well. Midnight Clock the play. And then we'll behold, which may or may not get countered. All right, so sudden storm could be good. So I might keep that, and then I really want to find a land as well here. All right, we got there. So for opponent sitting on counter spells, Thrix could be a good way to potentially play around them. So we'll pass. Saloon Division. So we could Thrix end of turn here before they get to untap and potentially counter it. Potential concern then is our opponent having some sort of mass bound spell. And now Primal Command, I guess, doesn't bounce creatures. Yeah, it could be worth it to just tap out for Sudden Storm. Opponent does seem to have a couple counter spells available. And then now our expensive spells would also be uncounterable. And that includes Squash, even with a discount. Can just play it for one mana now. Tamio finally shows up. It's gonna plus. Not that likely to hit in Singleton, but we'll see what we're looking for here. Wants to find Time Warp, so they want to take some extra turns. They might have some fog effects to prevent all damage to keep Tamiyo around. So good thing we have some removal to deal with her directly. Okay. So where do we start? I guess I can attack Tamiyo and see if that works. And then we don't have to squash just yet. And yeah, there's pause for reflection. So, if I want to draw my extra cards, then um, casting squash isn't enough. But I guess we could go like frostbite and then squash, or stomp and then squash. Yeah, I guess stomp plus squash might be the best use of our mana and resources. Ideally, we draw 
a red sword so I can still play Bone Crusher. Alright, perfect. So time you down. I've got a nice board presence. Mirror Reconjecture gets back, pause for reflection. So they'll be able to buy themselves quite a bit of time. Can go digging with Glimpse. Finding Cyclone Summoner. Yeah, that looks good. And then we'll attack, make them cast. Pause for Reflection. And then probably go for a Fire Mind Vessel. Let's see, this could also bounce an enchantment, but what sorcery would they be getting back here? Nothing too scary. So, yeah, fine to play a vessel. And then we can glimpse flashback, finding maybe a Wizard's Lightning, maybe a Celestus. Let's go with uh, a Wizard's Lightning. Don't think I need more creatures, since their opponent's on the fog plan anyway. Gets back Compulsive Research. So, next turn is when they might try and take a few extra turns copied with Mirari Conjecture. So that could be a problem. Jace comes down. We'll make this look easy. Can bounce one of my creatures. Okay, we'll draw. And then... Alright, let's see here. So we could kill Jace, potentially drawing a card in the process. And then... Next turn, our opponent could potentially take a couple extra turns thanks to Mirari Conjecture. Don't really want to bounce Conjecture with Cyclone Summoner to let them replay the fog effect. But our opponent is almost tapped out. So what if we just go face and play Kicked Fight with Fire? Then we should still have one mana left over for Wizard's Lightning to just burn them out. Yeah, let's give that a shot. Let's stab very carefully and see if this works. Bones at two. And our opponent is dead. I don't think we get to draw a card from dealing excess damage to our opponents, but I'll take it on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing Joda, five color deck. Could be a tough matchup, but having a one mana counter for their commander could be key. And speaking of keys, that's another good one. Do I play Giant's Amulet turn one? Probably not. Aha, uh -huh, it's a five color Sanctum Shrine deck. Okay. So in that case, their commander's a lot less relevant. So I don't think I need to keep up Wash Away. Sanctum of Calm Waters. We'll draw two per turn. But we can get our key out. Now I could also keep up Wash Away in case they have the 5 mana, 5 color shrine. Certainly an argument for it, but I think I need to develop my mana more. And then I could Demonic Tutor to get my giant that bounces everything. 
Or I can get the spark as an answer to a single enchantment. I think we go for a tutor. And then get rid of a tap land. And if I attack, I would get to draw a card as well, so that seems like a fine trade. So next turn we can play Reflections and tutor up our 7 mana Cyclone Summoner. Hold on of Life's Web is going to make some tokens. That's fine. Name Giant. Let me quickly double check if there's anything else I want, but I doubt it's... Opponent doesn't know what we searched up, so hopefully they just play another shrine here that we get to bounce. They are certainly going off thanks to the calm waters. Golos finds a land. Eh, not the best thing for us to necessarily bounce. Gives them extra mana to replay everything we just sent packing. So let's see if we Cyclone Summoner, there's only one mana left over, but I think we're still kind of forced to go for it here. Alternatively, I could Battle of Frost and Fire, and then Rebuke, finish off Golos. Doesn't sound all that appealing. And now double Cyclone Summoner. It's gonna pressure them quite nicely. Idyllic Tutor to find an enchantment. And yeah, that could be the five color shrine. Gets the Kami War instead. I think they're one mana short of playing that right now. So it's gonna be Stone Fangs. Alright. So we can hit for 14. And then we have to keep up Wash Away for the Kami War. But I could still play Key to the Archive in the hopes of finding a Time Warp, for instance. No Time Warp. The Spark. Or another Demonic Tutor. Well, Demonic Tutor can find Time Warp, so... That's the pick. And what don't I like? Giant's Amulet, perhaps. Although I don't see myself replaying Reflections anytime soon. Could have also gone for Giant's Fury on a Summoner, which would have drawn a lot of cards. So that was a nice counter spell. And Druid class. Okay, so Demonic Tutor for Time Warp should be game here, unless there's a Pact of Negation. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet, so Cyclone Summoner to the rescue. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing the Gitrock monster, so black, green, a lands deck. Well, 5 damage does not deal with a Gitrock monster, sadly, but we do have a counter spell. Is this good enough? Yeah, I'll give it a shot. Turn 1 Reclaimer. At least there's no Field of the Dead to worry about. So I think I'm okay running out Agar. And then next turn we can potentially go Celestus, keep up Counterspell. Ooh, there's the author of Gitrog. So... I can sacrifice a non-token creature to tap it. We'll decline. Alright, I think we stick to the plan here. It's 
Celestis keep up Counterspell. And then we'll take a bit of a beating from the new Gitrog until we find another burn spell. Reminiscent of Desecrated Demon from back in the day. Opponent actually unable to play Gitrog. Find an invasion, discard tap land, draw another one. Okay, so can play Calamity Bearer and still keep up counter spell. Probably fine here. And I'll tap my artifact in case they somehow destroy it end of turn so I can still keep up counter spell. And now we were hitting for six. They could have maybe used Reclaimer to get a Colony Garden as a chum blocker, although Agar is still drawing cards here at least. Opponent against Lotus Field, which I suppose does allow them to sacrifice two lands to grow the Elvish Reclaimer. So now it's going to be a trade, thanks to the double damage. Still keep up Counterspell. So these are dealing six each. And we're just waiting until we can find another burn spell to combine with Soul Seer to finish off Gitrog. Opponent might suspect Counterspell here, but uh, we'll see how they plan to play around it. Splendid Reclamation, getting back three lands. Yeah, that's pretty good, but I think we let them have it. And then we can hit for six. Could replay Agar to get on the board as opposed to Invasion. And still hang on to our counter spell here. There's also all of the Storm Giants that we can't forget about. Doubled with Calamity Bear. We were actually pretty close to just killing the opponent here. So we'll pass. It's about to take another six. And Blood on the Snow, we certainly have to counter. Two mana left. Opponent passes, and yeah, I think we activate Hall and go for the kill. Alright, more than enough here. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand facing an Umezawa ninjutsu deck. So having the early removal for one of their enablers is nice. And then invasion into Faceless Agent. Laboratory, probably fine to keep. I'm happy with any land to slowly get to 5 for battle. So I think we keep up Frostbite, let them attack, and if they go for Ninjutsu, we can kill the creature that they try and cheat into play, as opposed to killing the Fairy Seer right now. And it's going to be a Master, so now I probably just kill the Master. Opponent hangs back. Although if I kill Fairy Seer, that's a better enabler for them, potentially. So I could see the advantage of killing the Flyer and then... Faceless Agent or Agar next turn can block the Master. Could have also held Frostbite to maybe get the card draw off Agar later. Yeah, let's play Agar. Alright, Freebooter 
taking away Battle Frost and Fire is quite effective. Although, plenty of other burn spells we can find in the meantime. This Cry from Invasion is also going to help. Dive down for protection. So do I want to Invasion or just go for Faceless Agent, Keep Up and Dive Down? I think we just develop our board. And then I'm okay attacking because we can dive down if they double block. And probably kill Freebooter. And then our opponent concedes to the dive down. So yeah, that was a fast one. But us getting to draw a card, keep Agar, get our Battle of Frost and Fire back when they already mulliganed. It's going to be a bit too much to overcome. Alright, so yeah, we got to see our blue-red giant deck in action. Got to play some games where we got to draw Agar, some games where we never really got to trigger it in the first place. So it's definitely a solid build round, and I would say about half the games you can expect Agar to be important for you, whereas sometimes you can just win without it too. So certainly a fun brawl deck if you're into the whole giant tribal theme. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.